Hi everyone. Um, I've been looking just over the last uh, over to well, I'd looked into it earlier. It's one thing I was going to get to on Tuesday, but I, I couldn't find the direction God wanted me to go, and I'm not sure I found the direction fully tonight. But but I do want to at least. Um, I do realize what time we're in, and I do realize um, that though I have had opportunity through many years to know a lot of things and be in the the place of, of a lot of teaching and a lot of, of activity of God. No, I forgot to turn off my phone. Um, that... Um, I'd just like to say something. Um, we know from John, um, the Gospel of John, that when Jesus was with the apostles, um, before he went to pray um, in John, he was talking to them at that place where they had uh, communion together and he was getting pretty serious with them at those times he'd spoken many things to them but you have to realize that he's speaking to them after um, he had spoken to Judas and I'm not going to get into those things and told him to go on and do what he had to do Jesus began to um, speak pretty seriously uh, to, his, to his disciples and I believe if we, and so I'd like for you to read, if you will, you can go ahead and, and um, I'd say maybe, go ahead and start with verse 13 in the place where, um, gosh, it's hard to, it's hard to say because, yeah, let's just, let's, let's just say 13, when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And try not to just picture what you have in your mind. Uh, begin to see that in, in a realistic way. Uh, sometimes we've been so familiar with these things that we, we just seem to see, um, uh, I don't know how to, to say it, we just begin to see a storybook thing rather than to realize that here is Jesus in a place. He's just sent the one who's going to betray him out to do what is necessary to begin the finishing and the beginning of Jesus's full work. Um, they saw something wonderful about God and about the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and that Jesus is so excited for the Holy Spirit to come and we know he's talked about that um, earlier and continues then. Um, he's began to talk about himself. Um, he talked about his father, uh, in John 13, a lot of times. And he talked about uh, some things that he had spoken to them and his father was, uh, uh, going to do. He talked about the Holy Spirit coming. And sometimes we, we do this like church doctrine, but this is the, this is the heart of the Father. This is the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. This was our Lord who um, had to come into this earth like we came. And he had to learn. Um, but he didn't have sin. He didn't have sin. Because the Holy Spirit was the one who was instrumental in his birth. So I think without being getting too far afield or getting too imaginative, just to realize that it was so important for him to announce and instruct his disciples that it was so important that even though as he began to, to talk to them, they became a little bit worried or wearied or whatever it might have been, that it was important for him to, to show them a way to see and a way to know that he was sending into the world his going away, what he was going to do, what they were going to see him do was very important. He had to do this. 
but what was good was important to him that the Holy Spirit was going to bring back the, the fullness of this. Um, and um, and was going to be in them to bring forth things that, that Jesus himself, his own words, had sown in the hearts of his disciples and the people that he had spoken with who had believed him. And that if they received these things that he was going to do, that the Holy Spirit was going to be very important in their lives and in the lives of all the generations that were going to follow. I'm sure they couldn't even imagine <laughs> that there were people like us going to be around and that the things in the world were going to be like they are today versus where they were there in those early times of Jesus. But um, in these places, um, Jesus made things clear. And, um, and before he finished, and he was, I've said it to me, it was like an, it was an, a revelation to me to find out how excited Jesus was for the Holy Spirit to come. And to me, being raised in a Pentecostal church, a Pentecostal setting, uh, receiving the Holy Spirit, it was it was necessary. It was good. Uh, we had good revival times, and even when I was in uh, Bible school in the in the later years, or <laughs> really late years now, um, and in uh, all kinds of ministries where the Holy Spirit worked and and uh, was as used me and used those that I was with to have be in partations of revival and the stirrings of people's hearts, the, even the kinds of times when I was counselors and things like that, or a counselor, that how, but I can tell, I'm, what I'm reading to or going to is something else, but I just, that somehow it's easy for us sometimes to get excited for a while, but then lose it under like what the what the word of God teaches the cares of this life and that we have to there's an overcoming that has to come in our lives on a continual basis um, we have to overcome the situations not that are just present with us but the ones that we that we've gone through if we don't overcome them then they're still going to uh, uh, be a part of a detriment in our lives um, if we haven't learned how to forgive, then those things, and we haven't forgiven, then they're always going to be a hindrance somewhere. They're always going to push us further and further away from that personal relationship in the Holy Spirit with the Father and the Son. And we don't grow. We can hear the words, and we can shout and praise and be thankful for them, but they don't stay. The, the ground keeps getting hard. The ground isn't isn't continually being turned over. The waters are not there uh, to to help the, the seeds of the words that are still coming from the Holy Spirit, from the Word of God, from ministers and and from and from from people who who get insight just on a whim, so to speak. Oh my goodness now I've got these. So I'm sorry, I haven't turned off everything I forgot. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I just want to read John 17 just a little bit here because Jesus turns from them after he's talked about it with excitement and there's talked about how that um, they're going to they're going to go through some things but they can't ever not understand Jesus said that what I'm doing in a way what he was saying to them what I'm doing is going to overcome what's taking place in this world. One of the things that, that I still in my heart uh, I get excited with, if I can put it that way, but it's not so much excitement, but I, I get so thankful to God about how wonderful he is. When I understand the things that had gone on before I was certainly ever born and before even Adam, the man and the woman were created, um, and all the things, and, I, and I'm, I'm just one that constantly does thankful for God that that I'm more and more understanding that God is God is good and all this other stuff that men have put out and all the things that we have to go through today that God still is God and he's sovereign and what has what has ha happened and what is happening is still uh, we don't have to fear it and we don't have to be a part of it to think that our lives are here. We've got to understand the greatness of having the Lord Jesus Christ, have, 
having made us a new creation. And the word of God has to become so important to us. It can't be, if we're not in this word every day, then we are losing ground. And if we're just reading it for to help our problem over whatever it is, or, or we're just doing a little a little reading here or a little there. No, there's our prayer and our, our activity in the word of God and our prayer, in particular, our prayer in the Holy Spirit. If we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, not just praying for our needs, but moving, not even beyond them sometimes, just putting them in their place before God and believing him and then moving and letting things and wanting our, our, our lives, no matter what our situations are. And I know there are people that are in, in dire straits in some ways, but I also know that you know God. Hallelujah. So John 17 starts out this way. <clears throat> he had been talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit into the world and to demonstrate to the world that the world, the people in the world and the world itself needs God, that we need him as a savior and that there is something in him that he will begin to convict the world of this. And that's what the enemy hates so bad, is that there is a conviction that people know him and need him. But right now, we are being, we're being bombarded with mind-altering and physically altering things that I don't even know how to describe, but except that, that, that we who know him must must really become to know him we must become and let him make us who we must be in this time to hold the things that god has done so that men will not perish but that all men will come to a knowledge of the lord jesus christ so that when we are not here and i'm talking about the church when we are not here there is a record in the earth that still rings with great power and the enemy's accusations will not be able to prevail. And the things that he will ask people to do and to become, that they'll be willing to say no in order to have a place in the kingdom of God. Um, I'm not reading in the Bible of Euclid, so the pages don't turn. John 17. Jesus began to pray then, and he began to pray for himself. See, he was leaving them excited. He was confident that they were where they needed to be. It doesn't matter if people had their issues and all the troubles of his crucifixion, you know, like Peter did and others. It's like he's, he knows, God knows what he's done is a good thing, and he sees the end from the beginning. He knows that you will prevail. So don't let the enemy or your own self or your own you know, sadnesses stop you from that. It says, Jesus spoke these words and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. And I think sometimes you're going to have to say, I'm going to read this like I'm like the Lord's having me read it. I'm not just going to read a scripture necessarily. But God said to say this, he said, there is an hour that we are in. There is an hour right now that we're in, and it is an hour that contains the end of things, but it also is the hour that contains the glory of the kingdom of God being able to preach the gospel, and we're going to have to go through some things to do that, but there is going to be a gospel preached, and there are going to be multitudes of people that will turn their hearts to God. Why is that necessary? It's necessary because when the Lord comes, they need to go. You don't want to be left here. You don't want those iffy things. Well, I'll, I'll be all right. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but for what I understand from the Word of God in the book of the Revelation, which I've been reading, but also some things concerning those things from before the foundations of the world, that just looking at the kingdom of darkness, looking more closely in the Old Testament and in, in the New as well, of the things that, that we just sometimes gloss over. But as I've been looking at them, I'm realizing that we got to, we got to mean this thing, people. We can't just think we can just have a nice, easy time and it'll be all right and we'll pray for people and, 
and, and, and, and, and all that kind of thing. We will do that. But Jesus was doing something at that point in time. What you and I need to do, and that's begin to dedicate ourselves to the fullness of what God is asking, what he has done, that we become this thing. Um, everything that, that is open to us in the kingdom of God that's, that's strictly in line with the word of God is important for now. There are people, there, there are people that, oh, <laughs> hallelujah, we just want to complain against all kinds of ministries and all this sort of stuff. There are places where we have to judge things, but just be careful that your judgments are not the words of other people and not because you just want a way out in some way or another. Jesus spoke these words. He lifted up his eyes and said, Father, the hour has come. And I'm saying to you that God has said to me, Sharon, the hour has come. There's some things that need you. And I wasn't talking about any of you. He was talking about me. That I need to see you in. That I need to, to hear your voice. Join the voice and the power of my Holy Spirit about things. But he said, the Father, the hour has come. Jesus was recognizing his time. Do we recognize the time? Glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. And this shouldn't be just a prayer like Jesus' prayer. This should be our answer. Jesus had already done everything right. But Jesus knew that what he had yet to do, he was going to need a fully be, need the glorifying of, of God to get this work finished. Because he was going to go to a place where every part and parcel of his natural being, his soul and his, his body and his spirit was going to be tormented because all of hell was going to be set loose on him. Hallelujah. Father, glorify your son that your son may also glorify you. I was just praying this morning when I was aware of this. Um, this may be where I was going to come. I tried to come somewhere else, but God said, no, you already know where you have to come. And I was, I was wanting to cry, and it seemed like I couldn't. <laughs> it just seemed like I couldn't get the words out at that point, but I believe God's, God's working something in me so that I know how to pray, um, not just a one-time prayer. But so that it will open all the things that God has already spoken, all the things that God has already shown you will be there, and your heart will be open to see them even deeper. Not just to have knowledge of them, not just to get well, or not just so you'll have money, or all those things which are, are all a part and par parcel of this. But I know sometimes pain can cause us to um, get lost in it, and cause us, we just get discouraged about things that we should be, we should be moving out of that discouragement into the glory and the victory of God. And it doesn't mean you're not going to feel these things, you're not going to go through them, but you've got to say that I am so loved, how can I bow my knee, hallelujah, to anything else than to worship God and to let the faith of God rise in me. We have the faith of God, and I can't preach that today. I know I can't, but I realized in these last few weeks, but in these last few days, uh, what's happened to our faith. It's been so individually and collectively as a church. And I'm also not just speaking to you as an individual. I'm speaking to you as your pastor, those of you who are here as the church members. We cannot stay stagnant now. We cannot um, you've glorified your son and you've given him authority over all flesh. You see, he had authority. He went to the cross with authority. He didn't just show up there and these things happened. And then because he went through it, no, he came there with authority. You have given him authority over all flesh. Hallelujah. That he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And as far as God was concerned, we were all given. And to this, and this etern is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, 
and Jesus Christ who have you mis you've sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glory, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. He goes on to pray, but to remember, he's also telling you that as he's leaving, the Holy Spirit is going to come. And they are going to need to receive him. Hallelujah. Because he's going to be sending him. Um, well, praise the Lord. I've manifested your name to the men whom you've given me out of the world. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has been manifesting a lot of things. We're not just sitting here reading this. We're realizing that Jesus did this. The Holy Spirit's here and the Holy Spirit's been faithful. The church has been up and down, but that doesn't mean the body of Christ as a whole has. Wherever we have failed or faltered or fallen short, the blood of Jesus, the mercy of God, the fullness of the faith of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit has been able to restore every one of us and will even restore the church as a whole who will allow it. Because we have a gospel, not just to preach. We don't have souls to get, we want to win. So we have badges to wear. We want them to, to miss the things. We don't want them to be, to fall victim. We want them to, to rise with us when Jesus comes. Hallelujah. And if they've died in the meantime, we want them to be resurrected. Hallelujah. With those of our loved ones who have gone on to the Lord and to be with him in those places. This is a full, whole gospel. I just don't, I don't know that I could all, can get it all <laughs> because I've just seen so many things that I just have had to bow before and realize that I've just been kind of, you think, oh, you're in the Word all the time. You can be in the Word all the time. You can pray all the time, but not be making progress. Hallelujah. God isn't mad at me. He's not mad at you. He's just saying to us, "Come on, honey. We gotta keep. We gotta keep going. There's some things here that that you're not ready to even see. But I tell you that I've given you things if you will work with me that are ready to stand in the midst of these things. Hallelujah. And that faith, Hallelujah. That faith that's ours, just don't. Don't be too easy to say you don't have it. It was a gift of God. Hallelujah. We just haven't learned how to work it. And we've been caught up in this atmosphere and all these things in our own lives as well as the world. And as well as the activity of the enemy, which is very heavy, very vile. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah, has already won this victory. And we are not alone. We have... We have the angels of heaven. We have all of the Godhead. We have all of the things that God has given us. All those that have gone before. Hallelujah. They've left things. And we must lift, leave things here that will speak even when we are yet not speaking in the earth. I have manifested your name to men that you've given me out of the world. I know this is Jesus, but Jesus manifested his name. The Holy Spirit has added to that understanding and manifested his name to us. What have we done with it? I wrote a song years and years ago when I wasn't much of a songwriter. Still am not. But it was just very simple, but it was something that God kept saying to me. Once I kind of walked back in to knowing God and understanding that the word of God was alive and full of power, just like Jesus, that the Holy Spirit wasn't just an experience and speaking in tongues wasn't just a badge that you wore in a Pentecostal setting or one that you hid from the world of education or anything else you were in. Hallelujah. That it was full of power. And talk about changing my life, it did. 
I've entered in all kinds of situations and circumstances since then. And a lot of things have tried to rob me of a lot of things. But I'll tell you what, it didn't make me hate people. It didn't make me hate even the people who did me wrong and wanted me to sing a You Did Me Wrong song. Hallelujah. I want us to, to go beyond the pettiness of the activity of a heart that isn't God. Where we don't have to hate one another, that we don't have to talk about one another, that we don't, we don't, we don't listen to those things, and we won't let them contaminate our hearts when we realize that God loves them just as much as He loves me, or loves you. He said, "You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Let's keep His word, but let's keep alive the Spirit of the Holy Spirit that works that work, word in us to make us." what God spoke concerning us, not what we became in this world. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. And I know some people like to take this, yeah, well, I don't have it, and God gave me this. Don't look at it like that. God knew it may in coming, but if you were working with him, he could have kept you from some of the things. Hallelujah. And even if you had to go through some things, if you love him, you're going to come out the better. Hallelujah. And souls are going to be won. The devil's going to be defeated. Hallelujah. And some things that may have had interest into the entrance into this world will not have the power they would have had. Because there's a witness. Oh, and they have... For I have given to them the words which you have given me. Wow. Think how powerful that is. Not just a verse. Well, Jesus gave me his word. No. Jesus said to the Father in giving his record back to God, "You, I gave them the words which you have given me. And then he said, and they've received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. Man, they were going to be tried about it. Peter had some trouble. Others had trouble somewhere down the line. And some got caught up in themselves later on. But, but praise God, they believed. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit was able. And the blood of Jesus was powerful. And the word of God does not fail. <laughs> and God the Father himself. Hallelujah. All of heaven is armed and active concerning the church. Concerning you. Says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. Hallelujah. We've been here as always. Hallelujah. Uh, and all mine are yours. All that you've given me, <laughs> they're yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Jesus didn't just get glory for himself. He was glorified so that we could be glorified in him. That word glorified is not just to have a spiritual experience. Glorified means the glory of God could be in us. The same power that always had been in the, in the Godhead in bodily form. Hallelujah. It's a power. The glory of God is not just something that we will see, but it is the active power of faith in us. Now, I'm no longer in the world. Look at this. <laughs> but these are in the world. At this point, Jesus had already made his decision. He went to the garden, prayed and labored and interceded under the the actuality of what was going to happen to him. He knew his flesh was going to go through it. Spiritually, he was there, but he knew his flesh was going to be tried hard. Hallelujah. Words would come over it out of his mouth. Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? But always, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. He dedicated himself here again. We didn't hear the words in heaven when he was sent in the form of, a, of an embryo into Mary's womb so that he could take on flesh like ours. 
He said, no, I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. I come to you, Holy Father. Keep them through your name, those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. God will always be God, but we are one with him. Hallelujah. We have a lot of things to go through in the ages to come. <laughs> Just incredible things. Hallelujah. But we, are, we will not turn because we're from Jesus' blood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me have kept. Jesus is saying, I've done this, people. Hallelujah. I'm finishing it, and God will bring it. He'll bring you home. None of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. I believe Jesus um, longed. I believe if Jesus hadn't... if Satan hadn't just gone to, to, to Judas so bad that he killed himself. I believe that Jesus could have could have dealt with him, brought him back. Not. Hallelujah. Don't look at people in your flesh and think you can figure it out. But now I come to you. And these things that I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. What was his joy? Oh, it may have many aspects to it, but what I, we know to do the will of the Father, because the will of the Father meant things that we couldn't understand then, still don't fully comprehend. But hallelujah, it conquered things in this area of time that God took out of eternity. Don't forget that. Hallelujah. Eternity open, put this time, all of this we've gone, this happened, all the things that will yet come to pass in the, what we see written of in the book of Revelation, that we can get some understanding of, but it is so coordinated with everything, don't, don't forget that. But anyway, hallelujah, I'll go on and get out of this here. <laughs> but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world. I'm speaking them right here in this this time that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Ask yourself, is Jesus' joy fulfilled in me? What will it mean? Not just for me, but what will it mean? Be the Holy, Holy Spirit. Pray about these things. I've given them your word and the world has them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. See, Jesus was even praying in faith for what would happen to us. Ah, <laughs> I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. You know, you say some things for warfare. Hello. <laughs> you know, stand up to the enemy. Stand up to the, your thoughts of your own heart or the ways that want to prevail over you. These are not of the world. Just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. It's like, well, they were in the world. No. We were going to, we were died with him. We were raised with him. He would send us in this place. We would have to come to know him and to see him, but he was already seeing that we would fulfill and be saved if i can put it that way it's not very clear i know <laughs> but anyway sanctify them by your truth your word is truth as you sent me into the world i have also sent them into the world and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified by the truth i believe this is a word sometimes we haven't fully known um what it meant to be sanctified um but I'm not going to take time. I, I don't fully understand, fully have the fullness of it myself. I just understand more and more that Jesus sanctified himself so we could be sanctified. 
It's not a doctrine. Um, it's a spiritual thing. And then he prays for all believers. I'm not going to elaborate any more than I have uh, that I know of unless the Lord would have me to. So when we pray this, as Jesus prays for all believers, let's not just include ourselves or those that have gone on before us that we know died in Christ. Just realize to be dead, to die in Christ means that, that, hallelujah. Oh, it's so marvelous. But anyway, um, it's, not, it's not I'm a Christian. Realize the, the fullness of what being Christian is, not Christianese, not Greek or Hebrew or anything like that per se, but to realize the new language of God that is in Christ Jesus that we can read. But when we read, it wasn't just for information. It's for us to believe. Our reading of this word should come with faith. And faith should grow in its fullness of properties. Not to get things. Not to think that, oh, I don't have enough faith. We have faith. How do you have to understand how faith is, how it works. Praise God. But we can still stand in it. I don't pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. People need to believe. Not just us now here, but people need to believe because of our words, the activity of, of, of heaven, so that God can speak to them the marvelous things. When we go to win souls and things like that, we don't just try to win souls to have numbers, but we want them to hear a voice from God that they can never forget, not just the words of men, not just offering them something. Uh, we are giving them something. Our words need to be full of, of spirit and life that can be trusted. Yes, they have to believe. Yes, they have to live. But we have to, to be in places to be more than just uh, numbers. That God doesn't look at them as uh, their souls. Yes, no, they're spirits that have souls. Hallelujah. They have bodies that we can't see. Um, uh, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I have given to them. We need to understand a little bit more of that glory, not in our minds, but in our spirits, that we have, we have a sight beyond the things of the world, so that that the faith we have is is so powerful that it, it's like the blood of Jesus. We have faith in the blood of Jesus. We shed abroad in their hearts because it lives in us. That they may be one just as we are one, I and them, you and me. That they may be made perfect in one. That the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Well, God loves you. Hallelujah. There's something spiritual, a spirit. God, when we say that to people, it's not from our experience. It literally becomes an activity of, of faith working through that love, love, filled with that faith. Hallelujah. That enters them to cause them to bow their knee before God. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, he's still talking where he is now and with the Father, we are there. Hallelujah. I know we sing a little song. Our name is written down in heaven. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. It's just greater than, than I've known. Um, that they may behold my glory. See, we've got to see something. It's in Second Corinthians over and over. It's it's in Ephesians over and over. I mean, I was reading Ephesians the other day. I was overwhelmed. But like, oh, and I thought I knew that backwards and forwards. I should, it should know me backwards and forwards. Um, 
for you have loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, because in the fact that he was slain, we were already in him. He's who we knew. We know him. The world has not known you, but I've known you. And these have known you that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. This is Jesus' prayer. We think over the disciples that were there. No, this is his prayer over us today for all that would come, for all that would believe. Hallelujah. Um, this is a prayer also not of what Jesus did, if I can put it this way, because Jesus did that. This is also a prayer of what Jesus is doing right now in heaven. Um, in Hebrews 4, somewhere around the middle of the chapter, I think it talks about him being our high priest in heaven. So he's everybody's high priest, that we have the right to go to the Father through Jesus Christ by ourselves, on our own, um, that our high priest now is not like those of the old, but our high priest is in heaven. He's at the right hand of the Father. He's interceding. He, he knows how to speak the words. He and the Father speak over things. The Holy Spirit is working here in the earth. And all these kinds of things. Just believe God and realize that, hallelujah, we have some things to do. We're not just to have scriptures to, to repeat. We're supposed to have the activity of the Holy Spirit in us, the power, um, the revelation the insight, um, the prophecies of God has to rise up. We may not be all in the prophetic area of ministry, but that, that has to live in us. Everything that's being spoken, the things that are coming forth from the Father through that um, evangelist, they all work in their, their places, all these things. But at the same time, that relationship with Jesus Christ as he had with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit was with him. It says he, when he was baptized by John, the Holy Spirit came, descended in a form like a dove, but it said he it lit on him and stayed with him. And so it stayed with him until he had to lift off so that he, when he became sin for us. But hallelujah, he was there <laughs> with him in the resurrection and in these those last days on the earth uh, before he ascended back to the Father so that the church would, could come and the Holy Spirit could come in that position like Jesus was to be with us, to teach us, to guide us in these generations that have followed, not just a few years, but many years, hundreds of years now to where we are today. And we're counting off these years when Jesus returns. It's all important. It's not a theory. It's not some thing that we just know, well, Jesus is going to come. No, man, it's, it's, we're talking about something that began long before there was a world. God's dealing with everything. He has to deal with all the things that happened in the earth before we, before Adam and Eve came. And he had to deal with the things that came were there before Jesus came and was crucified and he has to deal with all those things and those things are they're bearing down on us with great with great fur furor but hallelujah we need to press into the Lord we need to let that prayer of Jesus the knowing of Jesus and the knowing of us that was there even there that in its full power so I'm going to let you go at this point, but thank you for putting up with the delay in things and uh, just letting me just come from this this point. I was struggling to go come from somewhere else, but God just said, just get there in John 17. We'll fix this. Okay, thank you.